The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 28th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial, then we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email, but send it early and send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading the upside. The Dow is up 517 points, leading the charge percentage wise. It's the semis are up four and a quarter percent, 123 points. Behind them are the NASDAQ 100 stocks, they're up 3%, 383 points. The SP is up 91, that's 2%. Trendies are up 339 points. Gold is up $2. Silver's back 28 cents. Lights recruit up 229. Natural gas back 31 pennies. And the 30 year Treasury trading out at 141.04. That's off 13 ticks. Lead the charge to the upside. You've got Amazon, 118 bucks. Google, 89. Booking Holdings, 48. Thermo Fisher up 42. To the downside, it's AutoZone. Off 5.5%, that's 120 points. Worse is uh, Align Technologies, down 20%. That's 70 points. 9% for O'Reilly Automotive to downside. Austin Technology off 85%. That's a stinger. And Teladoc. Down 50%, 45%. That's uh, trading out at 30 bucks. That's a stock that my recollection is not too long ago, months ago, was in the $300 range. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's gone from about $300 to uh, 30 bucks out there. But <clears throat> be that as it may, uh, I want to look at what you want to look at. I think what we will look at is we'll go to the four equity future contracts here first right off the bat. And what we have here, as I pull this up on the screen, is three of the four generated beautiful TD9 count bottoms. One that did not was the NQ. So if you take a look at the ES Mini, it's in the upper left-hand side. You'll see bar number nine. Let me get my crosshair out here, tell you exactly when that took place. Uh, that completed on the bar following bar number nine. That was at 11 o'clock. Now, price is able to take out one level of resistance. That was at 42.25, the top of the current profile. Then the second level of resistance has failed. That's 42.49. We're above the highs from last night. That suggests that price is going to make a move to 42.86. 42.86 is the next level, the next TD9 count breakdown resistance area. You're at 42.70 right now. So that same, there's no topping signal. So it should be able to make its way up to that level. The NQ. Even though it didn't generate a bottoming signal, it's obviously taken the cue from the S&P, from the uh, Dow, and from the Russell 2000, each which did form those TD9 count bottoms. Now, inside the NQ, you're above the overnight high. You're above a TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 13,347. Boy, this says that price should get back into the area of about 13579 Now, Apple right now, which is up 6 bucks, has, as we speak right now, has a confirmed by the D-point pattern. So it's got a Three River Morning Star. Many of the stocks out there today, at least as of 1, 10 in the afternoon, have that same kind of pattern. If you take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, you can see the nice TD9 count bottom that formed out here. Price taking out two levels or three levels of resistance. First was the profile, then at 33 
looks like 554, then at 33,670. And now prices head up to 33,902, your 33,745. Again, no topping signal here, at least for the 30 minute time frame. So that's what suggests moving higher. The Russell 2000, a little bit weaker than the other three out there. And it's going to take on its second level of resistance. That's at 190,930. You close above that, really what it needs to close above is the high of the day. But that took place at 5.30 this morning, and that would be at 19.13.80. And get above that, that says price wants to make us move back to the 1958-ish level. Now, that's coming from the 30-minute time frame charts. If we go take a look at the daily charts, give me a moment here, we'll change screens. <clears throat> And here on the daily time frame, so I'm going to give you some additional price targets. I do not have bottoming patterns inside the ES, the NQ, or the Dow. I take that back. Let's just say the ES or the NQ. The Dow Equity Future contract may have generated a bottom signal by testing and rejecting its uh, February 24th swing point on lighter volume. But whether that is or is not a bottom, what price is going to do or should do is go target that oscillator and change line at 34.030. If price can overtake, now that's where the counter trend rally, if this is all this is, that's where price should stop, right about there. In fact, inside the ES Mini, where price should stop, if this is just a counter trend move, would be 43.22. Inside the NQ, the number is around 13.567. Now, the Russell 2000 actually does have a bottoming pattern. That bottoming pattern is price got back to its consolidation. So the bottom of consolidation is held. This would suggest that price may target the 1948 level. Now, what happens if price takes over, gets above, trades above, closes above those red oscillator and change lines? Does it mean that this is not a counter trend move? It does not because those lines are green out or red. And that just suggests that there may be more counter trend move. Well, the next level of resistance on the daily time frames would become their daily profiles. And that's where we're going to go ahead and switch screens. The reason we're going to switch screens out there is because there are new profiles that are attempting to form. Now, my white background charts do not pick that up. In fact, my black background charts won't pick it up unless we use Stevie's advanced Doppler tool. And that's what we have in the system right now. So we're looking at the four equity future contracts, and there are new daily profiles that are attempting to form. I say attempting to form because this advanced Doppler tool, so to speak, um, will not be confirmed until this evening. But right now, these profiles have held all day, so they seem pretty solid. And so now we've got new levels of support or resistance. Support inside the ES Mini at 41.74. Resistance, 43.22. And that is very likely where the price target for the ES Mini is going to take us to. If we take a look at the NQ out there, it's 13.699 is the top of its profile, the bottom of which is at 12.951. Inside the Dow Equity Future contract, it's due profile has got support at 33.254, resistance at 34.214. And in the case of the Russell 2000, the resistance is up at the 1999, we'll call it 2000 level, and its area of support is at 1878. If price is able to close above, we don't even know the price will get up to those levels, but if they do get up to those levels, more importantly, if they do close above those levels, that's when we would say that this is more than a counter trend move. So if you're asking, what do the charts say is the area where the counter trend move should end inside the ES Mini. The ES Mini's got 43.22, you may remember as its oscillator and change line, and 43.22 is the top of the daily profile. What are the odds of that happening? Well, the 43.22 on the oscillator and change line as price moves higher will change as well, but that be basically is the price target area. Inside the NQ now, 13.569 was an oscillator and change line. 16, 13.699 is the top of its daily profile out there. So that's what's going on with the equity future contracts. Right now, we should expect and anticipate a further move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Now to some questions. The first question coming in at Tiger's Den was Dan. And Dan wanted to know the key levels of support, and I'll provide the resistance areas for ExxonMobil. So, Dan, there's a brand-new profile that has formed today. The bottom of that box, which price is trading above, is 8560 if it can hold above that level, it suggests price would target 87.70, the center of that profile. And then above that, at 89.80. Now, I had thought or anticipated that because price had broken below the bottom of its bullish profile for really two consecutive days, that would be uh, two days ago and the day before that, so Monday and Tuesday out there. That, and we did see yesterday that the counter trend moved it and at the uh, center of its bearish structured profile, 85.18. It was a suggestion that uh, maybe we're going to see some type of A to B equals CD down pattern out here. But that is not the case. Another key level. So this is actually a hammer candle that formed out here on April 25th. So that would certainly be a key level of support at 79.29. But we're not dealing with that right now. If I look at the other Exxon Mobil charts out here, the white background charts, I should say, what we can see is that at a daily time frame, price is trade above its green oscillator and change line. Now, I don't know where price is going to end the day, but if it does close above this, this being 86.58 or thereabouts, that's going to signal move to the top of the profile. But we know the center is also an area where price can find resistance. So it just confirms that we would see a further move higher. Closing above a green oscillator and change line is a bullish type of a signal out there. If I look at the intraday chart, just to look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we see nothing bearish here. In fact, what we see is that price should at least go target 87.48. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. If price is able to clear that, that tells us about price, uh, about price continuing to move higher for ExxonMobil. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to key levels of support, resistance, and uh, the new profile uh, is really the uh, is the key element right now to consider. Let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from Mike in New Hampshire. And Mike wants to take a look at 
ARKK. So let's put up ARKK. The black background screen's out here. And uh, give me a moment. I want to do something else. Um, just pulled up something else. There we go. Okay, great. So Mike's question goes like this. Does your system show a TD9 count bottom? So that means we've got to move off of the uh, black background screens. On ARKK daily, and or does it show any other potential bottoming signals? So we're going to switch over from this set of charts here, and we're going to go take a look at the uh, white background chart. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and take a look at all of Kathy Wood's funds out there. And uh, to do that, let's see, you should have it. Yeah, so you've got ARKK in the upper left-hand corner. And the answer to your question specifically, Mike, is yes. Today is bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, because we also have a gap to the downside, um, I wouldn't be buying ARKK right now, but we're going to go take a look at the instruments that make up ARKK and see if that supports what I just stated out here. You have a Rosemont indicator signal, so the preference would be to wait for a bullish reversal candle. Shoot, you could get a hammer candle today, but with a gap to the downside, and if this were to turn into a hammer candle, the question would be which one is correct, and we don't know. Because a gap to the downside is bearish. A hammer candle is bullish out there. That's not what we have. But at the end of the day, we could get that type of a signal. With regard to Kathy Wood's other funds, ARKO, bar number seven, looks like you've got an A to B equals C to the downside. That does have a hammer candle. And that would confirm, if it still maintains a hammer candle at day's end, A by the D point. ARKW, no bottoming signal there. ARKG, bar number eight, that says you could see a bottom pattern form between today and Monday. ARKF, right now you have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That's assuming that the hammer candle holds. ARKX, uh, no bottom signal there. Uh, looks like you have a bottom signal on print. That's your 3D set of uh, uh, 3D ETF out there. Israel is another ETF, and that has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, in the case of print and Israel, IZRL, they should move up to their oscillator unchanged line levels. But let's go from here to take a look at specifically for Mike, the actual components or some of the components that make up ARKK. Yeah, so give me a moment here to switch to that set of screens. I think I have it up. I have to have it up, or otherwise we're not going to be able to look at it because it'll just take too long for all this stuff to populate. Okay, so now let's change our window. And change over to take a look at the top eight holdings inside of ARKK. Or this, these were the top eight holdings of about a week ago. So I doubt they've changed much, although Teladoc's not going to be number two after today's price action. So what do we see when we take a look at Tesla? No bottoming signal. Price getting back to its breakout level of 802.26. Number one weighted stock. Teladoc, well, it's actually going to complete a TD9 count bottoming pattern today. This is the bar following bar number nine. With that wide ranging bar and gap to the downside, nothing that I would uh, go with. So the first two weighted say, yeah, wait. Roku is actually generating, at least at this stage of the game, 123 in the afternoon, a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Price should make its move to 95.30. No bottoming signal inside of Zoom other than maybe getting back. ZM is a ticker symbol. Getting back and testing a swing point. I'm going to just check on my other screen, see if, in fact, if it did that. And did it do that on lighter volume? Now, the swing point that we're referring to, or I am, is March 14th. That did 6.7 million shares. Price has actually not got down to test the bottom of that just yet. So we don't have any kind of a bottom signal then in the case of Zoom. Coinbase. You do have wave number seven potentially out here, but uh, I'm not even sure. And you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So I would wait in the case of Coinbase for some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. EXAS. No bottom signal there. Square, no bottom signal there, although I take that back. I see an A to B equals CD. So Square looks like it's confirming a Gartley buy pattern, and price should take its way up to the 110 area. That's its oscillator and change line. Um, U, what is U? What is U? I should know what U is. Unity Software. Well, Unity Software could, by day's end, confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That's assuming that it does generate this bullish hammer that is currently present out there. So that's the first eight instruments, and they're not overwhelmingly saying to you and I that now is the time to step into ARKK. Tomorrow may be a different story out there, but as we speak right now, that's not what we're seeing. Let's go take a look at the next eight instruments that make up ARKK. These are not all of the instruments. PATH, PATH is another one. Do we have a bottoming signal there? We do. This has already confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator signal. TD9 count pattern will form today on NTLA. 
You've got a uh, looks like a buy the D point on uh, is that Twilio T W L O. That's assuming the hammer candle maintains itself throughout the uh, day. You've got bar number eight on Spotify. Uh, so that says you could see a bottom pattern by tomorrow. You're in bar number eight on Beam. So it says you could see a bottom pattern between today and Monday. Today and yeah, today and Monday. Chris, bar number nine, wave number seven. So it's these last eight here out here with regard to ARKK that are showing the bottoming signal. So it does say you should focus on ARKK out here. Um, if I try to go back to that chart, so I just want to go back and take a look at the, let me just put up all the ARK funds here. Take a look at ARKK again. Let's pull this back a bit. And... Uh, yeah, Mike, I'm still going to suggest that you just be patient. Let's wait till tomorrow. Let's see what we get out there. Maybe a day's and, and come back and take a look at it on Friday, on Fantastic Friday. So I do hope that helps you out with regard to ARKK. And thanks for taking the time to write on in. We get back to this break. Looks like we have some other questions out here. We'll start getting to those. Looks like Etsy is the next one up on our list. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ann. We'll be right back. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF and.com TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got the uh, Dow is up uh, 595 points. S&P's up 97. NASDAQ 100, 407 points to the upside. Let's go take a look at the uh, next request out here. This one is coming in from uh, SatP. 
And uh, give me a moment. We're going to change the screens out here. We're going to get to Etsy. We're going to see the uh, eight panel set of charts. And the question from Seth is, uh, please take a look at Etsy and apps. Have they bought them? Can we enter a short-term long trade? So when we take a look at Etsy, I'm just going to expand out the daily time frame chart because that does have a bottom signal, at least as of 1.30 in the afternoon. So let's open this up. Let's pull this back. Where are we at out here? Well, this is a uh, hammer candle as we speak, but I don't know if it will be a bullish candle come day's end. If it is, then what you've got is a nice bottom signal. A uh, nice Rosemont indicator bottom signal, that is. And because price is, uh, if it's going to form this hammer candle, it looks like it'll be just above that red oscillator and change line. And you're with inside a new bullish structured daily profile that formed here two days ago, Set. This would suggest as long as price can close above that, and that is specifically, that number is 101.02. One, and if price can close above 101.02, that's going to at least suggest that price should make its way to 116.52, the top of that new profile. Now, that's the charts coming. That's the message from the daily time frame chart. As I look at a 195 minute time frame chart, I don't have such of a I don't have that type of a signal bottom signal. We do on the 130. We don't necessarily on the 65. We do on the 30-minute chart out here. So you've got some definite bottom signals. So focus on the daily. See if you get either a key. Now, a key reversal bar wouldn't be a hammer candle because we've already explored yesterday's low. If we explore yesterday's high, yesterday's high, by the way, is. I can't get it that way. I'll get it a different way. Yesterday's high is 102.25. So if price closed above 102.25, even if it's not a hammer candle, that would be a key reversal session. That would still give you that same bottoming signal inside of Etsy. So Sat P, I hope that that helps you out. You also want to take a look at APPS. Now we don't have a bottoming signal on the monthly or on the weekly time frame charts out there, but that doesn't mean you can't get a rally up to the 116.52 level. APPS is the uh, ticker symbol out there. So let's get those uh, charts fired up. And what is APPS? That is uh, Digital Tribune. And the question here is the same. Well, what we're going to get, depending on today's close, is a TD9 count bottom. So I say depending on it. Why is that? Because we are in bar number nine. In order to form bar number nine, the close must be below the close of bar number five. And the close on bar number five is 3265. And we're trading at 32.58. So I don't know, Sat, if there's going to be a bar number nine that forms today or not. If it does close below that level, then the answer is yes. Now, here, price is below red oscillator and change line. So it's not out of the woods. That would be the next level of resistance. If price can get above that, then you're looking at a counter trend move or a move up to about the 38.21 to 39.17. If you don't get a TD9 count bottom out here, then what? Well, then the question would be, in the case of apps, is it testing a prior swing point? And that prior swing point, I believe, is March 14th. But let me just go confirm that. I'm going to confirm it on my other charts out here. It is March 14th, and that low is 3061, and today's low was 3063. Missed it so far by that much. Volume today is 1.3 million shares. Volume on that March 14th swing point was 6.7. Boy, it's, it still has missed it. So it, with regard to the two out here, which one looks better, Etsy or Apps? I'm going to go with apps at this stage here, but we don't even know if it's going to complete a TD9 count bottom. So, Satpi, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks for taking the time to write in and have a terrific Thursday. Next question coming from David H. This is David in Tomball, Texas. David says, can we take a look at EK, EXK and Deborah Silver? We absolutely can. So let's get that fired up here, EXK. Finish reading the question. Where are the support and resistance areas for EXK? Okay, well, that's a little bit easier, EXK. And what we'll do for that is first actually slide on over into the black background. Nah, we can just do it from here. So your specific question was, where are the support and resistance areas? Support on a monthly is 338. Resistance on a monthly is 573. Support on a weekly is 361. Resistance on a weekly is 546. 
Support on the daily time frame will become its next TD9 count breakout level, and that's down at the 351 level. Today, you have bar number eight forming, David, and you could get a TD9 count that completes by Monday, confirms tomorrow, confirms meaning you get bar number nine, as long as price tomorrow closes below 411. So it looks, and you have an oscillator and change line that has changed color. So it does look to me like Endeavor Silver, EXK, is setting up for at least a move up to that red oscillator and change line that is at 454. On a 195-minute time frame chart, you have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. That suggests a move to 395 and then 413. No bottoming signal on the monthly or the weekly. Bottoming signal right now on the 130-minute time frame chart. As is on the 65, as is on the 30, as is on the 15. So, boy, Endeavor Silver is certainly giving you a signal of a bottom, David. I do hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a great day. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Now, that didn't come from uh, who you thought it would have come from, which would have been Hector. And Patty said this is from Brent in Martinez, California. So Brent's question is, and thanks for the large print. I really appreciate that. I'd like your thoughts on the VIX. So let's go take a look. Let me get the uh, first. We're going to change screens here. And then we're going to go over to the VIX. And then I'll continue reading the question out here. But let's get that up on the screen while we do read the question. So here's one chart for the VIX. And the question goes like this. I like your thoughts on the VIX. It looks like there might be a greater than 10% move in the VIX today. That would be to the downside. Right now, the rate of change is minus 10.57. If that were to happen by day's end, would that potentially be telling? What would that be? What would that potentially be telling you? Okay. So, and there's there's more there's more question there. But let's just answer that specific question. And we answer that by coming back and taking a look at this chart here. The green arrows on this chart represent one day rates of change below minus 10%. And what we can see for the most part is that most of these lead to higher price. In other words, they are initiation signals to move to higher ground out there. So yes, Brent, if we do get that one day rate of change below minus 10%, that would suggest to me a further rally out there. I had the spot volatility chart up on our screen here. I'll point out something else. And it's actually kind of a cool pattern. This is when things kind of get lopsided. And what I mean by that is when we have the spot volatilities that exceeds its three-month or six-month or even yearly version. Right now, what I'm looking at is the ratio between the spot VIX and its three-month version. When it gets above one, that says, okay, prepare for a potential bottom. Typically, those bottoms happen when it dips back below the one level. And I've got yellow arrows pointed here. And you can see that each of those did lead to nice rallies. Well, we got another one of those signals three days ago. And we have a new profile. And all that tells us at this stage here is to expect, not be surprised, Brent, or anybody else, that we should see a move to 43.22. Again, 43.22 would be where a counter trend move should end. That would be where you would want to go ahead and sell. Now, what you'd want to be doing is looking at the ES Mini, looking at the intraday charts to see if we have sell signals there. The other side of the trade is that it is an initiation to higher price. And the ES Mini takes out 43.22, in which case we're headed back to maybe the 45.09 level. So Brent, I hope that helps answer your question with regard to the spot volatility index. I'll look at the rest of your email and we'll come back and answer those questions as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Would love to hear from you as well, folks, at 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Brent's, uh, the rest of Brent's question reads like this. It says, uh, would also like your overall thoughts on the markets going forward. More bearish or bullish? Could you go over the longer term time frame TD9s uh, and uh, so forth? So really, Brent, the, the market is kind of at the precipice here. And what I mean by that, and it's this chart that we're taking a look at, we've discussed this several times. Yesterday, we went through it in a little bit of detail. We'll do the same here right now. What we can see now, this is a line chart. These are monthly time frame charts out here. So we're getting the bigger picture. And uh, what we can see is, so because it's a line chart, and I have this set to on close, we're looking at closing prices. So we're not looking at uh, candlesticks. We're not looking at uh, you know where the high on the bar was or the low on the bar was. And I can show you the low on the bar is below 105. But right now, 1.051 on a closing basis is the closing low that takes us back into 2017. Tomorrow is the end of the month. If the euro closes below 1.051, that's a signal that it's getting ready to cascade all the way back to the 2,000 lows, closing lows, that is. And that is below par out there. So if this level fails, what that should then signal to us is that we will see, we will see a rush of global capital, at least European capital, that comes into the U.S. market. Now, we're already seeing that in the case of the U.S. dollar index. The U.S. dollar index is on a tear. We talked about during the um, 1 o'clock update how it should form a TD9 count top by tomorrow. I'm interested to see if that TD9 count top fails. And I think that it will. Uh, and I think that it will based upon what we're taking a look at here inside the euro chart. But with regard to the monthly time frame out here, there still is the possibility that the euro will save itself. And then we're in this choppy market for at least through the midterm election out there. But if, in fact, we see the euro fail, Brent, we could or should see a gigantic move or rush of capital into the U.S. And I know that it, and it will, it's not a technical pattern, so to speak. It's a real fundamental thing that is uh, out there. And uh, But if we go take a look at, give me a moment here. If we take a look at the euro charts, the one thing that could save it, it's the monthly time frame, it is that we are in bar number nine of a TD9 count. But 
as you know, it can be the bar following bar number nine. So the euro may or may not form a bottom in the month of April. Maybe it is in May, or maybe it's not at all. But when we look at the weekly time frame chart, we go down to the next lower level. The weekly's got no bottom signal whatsoever. The daily has no bottom signal whatsoever. So this is suggesting to me that the euro is going to crack below this level. That's again 1.0515. Now, as I open up the chart here on the monthly time frame, you know, we still do have to use, in essence, the swing point. And the swing point takes us back to the week of January of 2017, and that's at 1.034. So that's really the last bastion of hope. If price closes below 1.034, then the euro is telling us that it wants to head lower out there. And if that occurs, then I think that's a very positive for the U.S. stock market. If we go take a look at the U.S. dollar index, just with it, it along with its basket of currencies now. So the euro says it wants that lower. That says the U.S. dollar continues to move higher. Oh, I don't have them open. Well, yeah, I won't. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do that and we'll just uh, tell stories. So I already hit the button. So uh, um, it's, hopefully this will populate relatively quickly for us. But these are the currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index. The euro being the most heavily weighted. That's in your upper left-hand corner. Next to that would be the, uh, I guess it's the yen. Yeah, I thought it was the Great British Pound. But either way, it's the yen and the Great British Pound. The yen is weakening. The, the yen is weakening in a big way. And we don't have any kind of a topping signal here. So it looks like it wants to continue to head higher. Price trade above its green oscillator and change line. That'll put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. The Great British Pound may make a TD9 count bottom between today and Monday. So that could actually bounce up to its oscillator and change line. That would weaken the U.S. dollar index by a tad out there. And the other currencies, the Canadian dollar, the Swiss franc, the Swedish corona, not really going to impact. They're, they're like 3%, I believe, each or less of the uh, U.S. dollar index. So the, now we can see that the uh, Canadian dollar did hit resistance. That was at 1.287. That was a TD9 count breakdown level. But, uh, it, you know, it's questionable whether or not we're really going to see a top inside of the U.S. dollar index out there. We know that, uh, so I've just pulled this back. So, we know that uh, Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th. February 24th is right here, right at this bar, bar number four. Now, I want you to look at the rate of change since then. Look at the U.S. dollar index out here. Now, my concern, Brent, the other side of my concern here is that this is or can be, could be a signal that um, big money is preparing for war. And when big money prepares for war, they try to, um, you know, they try to hedge their, their as much of their assets or get rid of the assets. And, and basically, during periods of war, the U.S. dollar becomes a safe haven. And maybe that's what we are looking at out here. Oh, thank you. So Duffy says the Canadian uh, loony is 9% of the uh, weighting inside of the U.S. dollar index. And it is a Japanese yen that was 13%. And the Great British Pound was only 12%. Okay, so good. So I had those. But, you know, we'll watch it. Look, as TD9 count still could form out there and pull back. But uh, as far as the euro, the euro has anything to say about it, that's certainly not its message, at least as of 148 in the afternoon. So, Brent, I hope that that helps you out with regard to what I see for the overall market. I know you would like a definitive answer. And if I could give you a real definitive answer, I absolutely would. It's just uh, we're kind of sitting at the precipice right here with regard to the euro. And then you and I, we've just taken a look at the details to say, well, what is it really telling us? Let's go on to our next question. Our next question is coming in from Susanna. And uh, Susanna wants to take a look at MARA. M-A-R-A -A is a ticker symbol. So let's get that fired up here. And let's actually read the question. The question goes like this. Would you do your analysis on MARA, monthly, weekly, daily, support and resistance, oscillator and change line? Thank you. Well, that's what's going to pop up on your screen. So I do hope you're watching this on Tiger TV. And Susanna, if you're not inside the Tiger's Den, please join. It'll cost you $1, $1 for a full year, and you're going to be amongst an uh, extraordinary group of uh, individuals, let alone great traders out there. But as we take a look at Mara, price is trading below the bottom of its monthly profile. That's at 24.84, and it's below its oscillator and change line, about 31.35. It's below its weekly profile. The bottom there is 21.57, so it's below support. Uh, it's below its oscillator and change line. Mara may be targeting its TD9 count breakout level down around $1.85. Wow. No bottoming signal on the daily time frame. Prices below profile levels and the oscillator and change line. 
The oxygen change on is 1871. Profile levels are much higher than that. So no, nothing good there. On an intraday basis, we do see a short-term bottom formed with roads momentum indicator and TD9 count bottom. Uh, and the price should make its way to 1733. Now, if price can close above 1733, then you're probably looking at a move that'll take you up into about the 1857 level. But with regard to, I've given you your data, monthly, weekly, and daily. I don't see a bottom signal as we speak just yet, although that was not your question, but I did go ahead and throw that out there. And now we go to the last question that we have in here, and this is from Hector and Patty. They are our fuel injectors. And Hector and Patty, they want to take a look at Wells Fargo. WFC is the ticker symbol, and they want to also look at Bank of America. And they have loaded up their wagons with WFC. So right now, today is forming a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom on its daily time frame, and that's because of its bullish amber candle, and it's also got a Three River Morning Star. Price should go target the 4574 level. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Hope you're right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. So Hector and Patty, we've got the uh, black background charts for Wells Fargo up on our screen. And uh, so we know that the daily was showing us a bottoming pattern. You've got a three river morning star, maybe a daily bullish hammer candle out there. And that would suggest that price should make its way up to 4606. That is approximately where the oscillator and change line is, as well as the bottom of its daily profile. If price can clear that, then we should see a move to 4751. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. If price can clear that, then you're looking at 4876. 
7. And that's where, if this is only a counter trend move, I know you've backed up the wagons, that's the level where a counter trend rally would end. So 48.77 is going to be a key area. What concerns us about the charts here is you're below the profiles for the daily and weekly, and you're inside the profile for the monthly time frame. No bottoming signals on the weekly or the monthly. And so if the uh, daily signal here fails, I mean, we see a close below yesterday's low at some point, that's going to suggest to move back to 40.02 or 42.04. So Wells Fargo has its work cut out for itself out there, but you do have a daily bottoming signal, and it does make sense to take the uh, trade. If we take a look at Bank of America, we basically have the uh, worst outcome. When I say worst outcome, what do you mean by that, Steve-O? Actually, what I mean is that prices below daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. So that's what I mean by worse out here, as opposed to Wells Fargo. And, and of course, you want to make sure that the XLF itself, the entire sector, uh, gives you a bottoming signal too. But with regard to Bank of America, um, you do have, let me switch over to the white background charts. The positive here, potential positive, is coming from the weekly time frame chart. And the weekly time frame chart shows that this should be a TD9 count bottom. It's going to complete this week. So if you're long, what you don't want to see is some type of close next week below this week's low, whatever that is. So far, the low for the week is out at the 36, 35.93 area. Because if price were to close below that, the weekly chart would then be suggested to move back to at least 32.40. Uh, you do have a already roadsman to indicator bottom pattern on Bank of America for its daily time frame chart. That hammer candle from back on April 25th. But shoot, price is not even able to take out its red oscillator and change it. But if it can do that, then you could look at it move up to 38.17. So Bank of America is a bit concerning out here. Not that it hasn't bottom. We've got the signals. Um, but it's got its work cut out for itself. So Hector and Patty, best of luck to you on that trade. Everybody, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday, 1 o'clock sharp. Have a terrific Thursday, folks.